Following the rather, let's say, lackluster announcement from Canon, the M50 Mark, why even bother? Comments quickly turned to the prospect of a flagship M series camera to bring all the features and specs that people were kind of hoping to see from the M50 Mark II. Such a camera being touted as the M7, essentially, in theory, a spiritual successor in mirrorless form to the very popular 7D DSLRs. Now, I don't actually think that we are going to see essentially a 7D mirrorless in the M series lineup, but let's entertain the possibility now, the notion that we would see one. What sort of specs are we likely to see from it? Well, the whole philosophy, what made this, the original 7D DSLR so successful was their ridiculously high speed for the price. They essentially offered like 80 and 90% of the speed of a 1D, but at nowhere near the price point because they were built around much cheaper APS-C sensors rather than larger APS-H or full frame. So presumably the mirrorless successor would follow that same ideology. So, sensor and shooting speeds of a mirrorless 7D. Now, honestly, Canon don't seem that bothered and invested in their M-series lineup. It appears to be more like they're just trying to milk what they can out of it without investing into it. So, it seems unlikely that they would invest a ton of money into a brand new high-speed sensor specifically for an M7 when they already have sensors within the M series lineup that they could use. Currently they've got two, the 24 megapixel that's found in the M50 and M50 Mark II or the 32 and a half megapixel that's found in the M6 Mark II and the 90D. You might consider that the 24 megapixel would probably be the better choice because lower resolution would mean faster shooting speed and also probably better noise performance. However, Probably not the case, because that 24 megapixel sensor is, I believe, the same 24 megapixel sensor from several years ago that was found in the likes of the M3, and I think it was the 200D and the 750, basically a ton of the old Rebel DSLRs. So that sensor is a fair few years old, and it was never really designed for high performance cameras. So odds are, the readout speeds that you could get from it probably wouldn't be sufficient for a flagship M-series camera. By contrast, the 32.5 megapixel sensor of the M6 Mark II was a newly developed sensor for that camera and the 90D, and both of those cameras have much higher shooting speeds than anything that's using that old 24. Now, a big question mark over whether they go for the 32.5 megapixel would be whether they can get any more performance from it. Currently, the M6 Mark II can shoot up to 14 frames a second with continuous autofocus. But if that's the sensor running near maximum capacity, there's no headroom for any greater improvements in speed, so they probably would have to develop a new sensor. But let's run with the hypothesis for now that there is still room to improve off that sensor. Now, a flagship APS-C would likely have substantially higher than 14 frames a second performance. I wouldn't be surprised if it's maybe more like 18 or 20 frames a second, given that the likes of the R5 can shoot 20 frames a second. Now, granted, on the R5, there are some caveats to that. It's only an electronic shutter, and I do believe it drops it to 12-bit RAWs rather than the full 14s. Whereas I would expect to see the flagship APS-C be able to do, say, 20 frames a second in full mechanical with 14-bit RAW as well. But getting that speed isn't just down to the speed of the sensor, you also have to factor in the horsepower of the camera as well, namely the processor. So it's not likely that they're just going to take the same processor that's in the M6 Mark II, which I believe from memory was the Digic 8 processor. So probably we would likely see the much newer Digic X processor. Although, one another trait of the 7D DSLRs was generally that they were fitted with dual Digic processors. Now I believe the reason for that was one of the processors would focus on handling the data from the sensor, while the other processor 
could continue handling things like the autofocus and the metering. So perhaps the flagship APS-C mirrorless would see a similar trait, maybe dual digit X or even dual digit eights might be sufficient. However, two processors would probably need a bigger circuit board and I don't think a larger circuit board would fit within the standard M series body design. So I think we would likely see a slightly larger body than say the M6 Mark II. It would likely also need more power to run and there we get onto the topic of batteries because really all the M series cameras so far have been using either LPE12s or LPE17 batteries which are fine for casual day shooters, you know, you go out, you take a few hundred shots here and there, but they're not really that good for like heavy duty usage like sports and wildlife shooters that might be rattling off a few thousand images a day. So I would actually prefer to see maybe the LPE6 battery dropped in there, which is a much more substantial battery and also the same battery that was used in the 7D DSLRs. That's going to mean the body is bigger than a current M6 and it's going to have a bigger grip as well, which isn't a bad thing for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the larger grip, because with a camera like an M7 would really be targeted to sports and wildlife shooters who would likely be using larger lenses like telephoto lenses and trying to shoot with a tiny little M series body on the back of a big telephoto lens is not the easiest thing to do. Speaking from experience. So a larger grip and a larger body would make it generally a bit easier to try and balance and use. Also would allow better ergonomics within the body, the button layouts, etc. Because again, while the M series are brilliant little travel cameras, they're kind of fiddly. They're not the easiest things to be using and changing settings on. So if you've then got a larger body with a larger grip, like, you know, closer to the size of, say, an RF camera, what would be the point of fitting it with an EFM mount? Because the whole premise, the whole idea of the EFM series is small, travel-friendly, compact cameras. And unfortunately, they have the lenses to match. They don't really have any lenses that are suited to sports and wildlife shooters. So to make an M7 a, a marketable camera would need some suitable lenses to go with it which is more R&D and more cost for Canon to try and develop those lenses. Something like, say, a 70 to 200 or a 100 to 400. But Canon have just created those sorts of lenses in the RF mount. So it would be more logical to just make that camera in an RF mount where those lenses already are. And now I know there will probably be some people saying yes, but you could make it in an EFM mount and then just use one of the adapters and adapt the DSLR lenses onto that camera body. True, you could, but you could also do the same thing with an RF mount camera. The only benefit to then doing an M mount series camera is that you would then have access to the EFM lenses, of which there aren't really many. So I think more likely we would see an R7 rather than an M7. Although I do think it would still carry the same sort of specs that I suggested for the M7. Like maybe utilizing that 32 and a half meg sensor, shooting up to say 20 frames a second. That I think would make a very popular and a really worthwhile spiritual successor to the 70 series. Now that's not to say I don't think we won't see more M series cameras for those people who want to see more M-series cameras, but I don't think we're going to see some big flagship level camera with much better ergonomics. I think really the M-series is always going to stick with much smaller travel friendly cameras that just maybe happen to have fairly good shooting speeds for the odd occasions that people want to use them. I don't see them trying to create some more kind of real enthusiasts camera because it doesn't have the lenses to back it up. Those are just my thoughts and opinions, but what do you guys reckon? Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below while you're down there. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button if you haven't already done so, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.